Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to How To Be A Skier, a film by the same people that have taught me how to be Canadian, how to be American, and also what Canadians hate, and so I can only take this as gospel. How to be a skier. Follow these steps and you too can be like us. Okay. Step one, buy a pair of skis and learn the difference between downhill, backcountry, cross country, old school, and those weird short skis nobody likes. Step two, <laughs> decide what kind of skier you want to be and dress accordingly. Cross country, backcountry, big mountain, free skier, park rat, gaper, euro, or grom. Step three. Hang on, okay. Well, I'm already in over my head and there's definitely a lot to learn, but my goodness, all these outfits. I can't believe Park Rat. What is the length of that jumper? But I definitely just have to go back to the beginning and, well, first off, what are those things? They are like the penny board of skis and I guess, would they be faster because there's less friction or would they be slower because there's less to glide? I really don't know and you're going to be digging in more. I can understand those. They are definitely like some Simpsons, Ned Flanders looking ones if I've ever seen it. Just two planks of woods going down a hill and then these ones i really would love to know why they're even a thing if no one likes them and do they have a purpose besides just being short skis and then i mean moving on to step two i feel as though you need to kind of know what kind of skis you're going to be having before you decide this cross country back country big mountain i feel as though that is all determined by the skis you wear on your feet and i don't know if one goes with one and the two goes with two but i definitely feel as though i can make a couple of pairings around here especially back country with back country and cross country with cross country step three take lessons and learn the basics pizza pizza Step four, now buy a season's pass. Hey, can I get a season's pass? Well, sure, that'll be $2,000, please. And don't forget Whoa. to take advantage of age discounts. How old are you? Uh, 12. Step five. Oh, how much money can people save or do they rot the system with just by saying, yeah, I'm 16. I mean, you might want to play it off a bit more cool than he is. And even if you just throw in a 12 and a half, you know, kids have to say, no, 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 I'm not 12 or 13 or 7 or 6. No, 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 I'm 12 or 2 or whatever and a 3 quarters and a half just to make sure that you're really a kid. But I guess the main thing that you have to make sure is to yell pizza. I have no idea what that is even talking about. And I guess I would probably learn that if I took the basics, but I feel as though they have to be some explanation there. How old are you? Uh, 12. Step 5. Avoid having a Gorby Gap at all costs. The minimal Gorby Gap accepted among skiers is zero. Step 6. Remember that walking in ski boots can be awkward. Oh. Really awkward. <laughs> Step 7. Learn ski jargon such as the following. Pow, go. dank, dump, jib, hip, fizz, killa, shrout, smear, slarb, chowder, avi, fakey, switch, gaper, rocker, pizza, french fries, yard sale, and rear entry. Step Um. Okay, sure, just give me a sec on that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna need a few more hours and days to be able to learn all of those, and I feel as though a couple of them I have heard before, let alone whatever he said with his helmet gap thing. Avoid having a Gorby gap Gorby at gap. all costs. The minimal Gorby gap accepted among skiers is zero. Is <laughs> zero. Okay, I mean, I was about to ask, is that measured in inches or millimeters or centimeters? But I guess zero is zero. And I don't know how comfortable that would be if you're just going to have your helmet chattering on your goggles the entire time. It feels like you want some kind of a gap. So any kind of wiggle room just doesn't take out the bridge of your nose over and over and over again. But I guess if nothing else, this is all very good information, especially about walking down the stairs. And actually, there's just a pizza there. Hang on. Is this why he was yelling out pizza before? Because he saw this guy just take a quite impressive tumble down these stairs and he went, oh, the pizza's been wasted. Step 8. Abide by the rules of a powder day. No friends, no work, no peeing, no meals, no whining, and no BS. Guys, wait up! Just gotta pull my skins apart! Step 9. Brag about how many days you have on your season's pass. Man, I must have like 10 days on my pass by now. I think I have like 40. I've got 400. But there's only 360. I've got 400. Step 10. Learn to distinguish different types of snow. Pow, corn, cement, champagne, or frost, groomer, elephant snot, pillows, snurt, fake snow, and yellow snow. Step so 11. many words. Hang, wait, yellow snow. That one just hit me way too late. It took a second to process because it was just too many words. Like I said, it was overloaded. I mean, to be fair, at least I am already one up from the other list because pow was also included in that. And I can only assume it's going to be meaning powder, like a fresh fall of powder snow. I mean, I'm not too sure what corn would be. Maybe just a little bit lumpy, which doesn't sound too satisfying or even comfortable. But then, okay, well, actually, cement doesn't sound too comfortable. Well, that's for sure. Fake snow. I guess is fake snow man-made snow? No, I think a lot of snow is man-made snow these days. Step 11. The intensity of your goggle tan is in direct correlation to how cool you are. Hey man, do I have a goggle tan yet? <laughs> nah. 
Step 12. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Honestly, I think if they hadn't given the context of that, that would be a very insensitive joke they'd be making. Nah. Step 12. Don't let the off-season stop you. Park rats should jib everything. Curbs, rails, stairs, posts, and cars. And cross-country skiers should never take a day off. And then he says, that's no Gorby. That's my wife. <laughs> Step 13. Build a mini jib park and convince a friend to test it. Step 14, practice your afterbang and make tricks look easy by showing extreme steez when you land. Add personality to your afterbang with jazz hands, gymnast ribbon, or by making it rain. Step 15, bask in the glory that is après ski. A time to sit back, relax, and get totally obliterated after a hard day of skiing. Step 16, get excited on the first snowfall of the season. Step 17, start the countdown to the next season on the last day of the previous oh, season. Oh no, Step poor fella. Look at that, 83 days, 9 hours, 42 minutes, and he's even doing the seconds. He's going to be very occupied for, I guess, let's say three months. I mean, to be fair, I can only imagine that as soon as people start seeing snow, especially if you are just one of those people that just go, yes, we're finally here. I mean, if you are one of those people, you probably just go north if you really want it. But either way, if you're really just keen on your sneaking and you just live in one of these towns and places or you just have a holiday place where you can go to, you're just going to see that one icicle and just go, ah, it is time. But I think what confused me the most is a complete non scare is what was going on here? Okay, they called it Ste Zone. Yes, yes, yes. Ste Zone TM, to be fair. So I got to be careful here. But from 90, they're getting what? Almost like a 30 degree lean? I mean, I don't know if that is impressive or not. It's kind of impressive to me. I guess, in a way, you're just relying on the compression of the skis and not falling over and really keeping your balance. But then I guess if you go too far back, then you are just going to completely fall back. And there's not going to be much that can save you once you're that far back and you go skis overhead. Step 18. Work all summer so that you can ski all winter. Learn how to live frugally because you'll spend most of your savings on shot skis. Step 19. If you're having a rough day, remember, it's not your fault, it's the snowboarder's fault. <laughs> Step 20. Respect the Alpine Responsibility Code, especially number 9. Step 21. Make a GoPro edit filmed entirely from a ski pole. Wow. Use the most played out electronic music you can find. <laughs> Step 20. Oh, hang on a second. That was a serious amount of snow that he's just clearing with his chest. But to be fair to what they're making fun of, I feel as though this footage is actually pretty good. And you can see, oh my goodness, it's so cold. Look at the amount of ice around his face. I mean, it makes sense because then you just get something like this. And so maybe that isn't his first attempt. But geez, you certainly would be feeling it. And I'm sure in a way just going, oh, I wish I had my second pole. And to be honest, I see no reason why Step 19 should ever stop on the slopes. You know, you have a rough day. You just blame the snowboarders. No worries. You know, you get cut off in traffic. You just don't make the bus, whatever it may be. You can always just rely on the snowboarders just to make sure that you're having a bit of a worse day, can't you? Step 22. Always ask questions about other people's gear. Cool jacket. Where'd yeah. you get it? How much rocker do those have? Whoa, are those 2018 poles? Are those reverse camber? Is that a triple XL? Step 23. <laughs> That's what I was asking because I did not understand where these people are shopping to be able to get a jacket that long. How do you possibly get a jacket that is, let's say, relatively decently abnormal size? No, not abnormal size, normal sized in the arms, but then abnormal size in terms of length down to your shins. I don't get it. Where are you buying these things from? I mean, I guess probably Whistler or something. And I mean, hopefully some people can let me know where the Gorby Gap originated from. You know, is it a play on people just not being very good or is it something completely different? Either way, he's definitely not a Gorby, or he doesn't have a Gorby gap. Step 23, constantly right, check the weather report for snowfall. If we don't turn things around, we're gonna go bankrupt. Well, so we just got 30 centimeters. Meeting adjourned. And always follow the 20 centimeter rule. Nice. Step 24, Whoa. aspire to nose butter like a pro. Eh, practice makes perfect. Step 25, don't forget to wax. Ah! No, no, not that kind of wax. Oh. What? Why couldn't you tell me before I last step 26? I was going to say, I have no idea why would that be a thing. I mean, I know in cycling it can be a thing, but I wouldn't have understood why it would be a thing in snowboarding and skiing because you can wax a surfboard and that makes sense in terms of grip. And so you're thinking the same thing for... No, it would be on the bottom because you clipped into skis and snowboards. So I don't really know. What is the wax for? I mean, I also have no idea what that is about. Is it kind of flexing the skis or the nose of the skis into the snow so then you kind of turn around? That's what I'm kind of getting from this mediocre example considering they ended up on the ground, but I can kind of get the gist of it, I hope. Step 26. Enjoy movie nights with your significant other. I love this part. 
Yo, that's so sick. Step 27. There are two types of people at gymnastics facilities. Those who should be there and those practicing their grabs. Step 28. Always complain about the conditions. Yo, it's so tracked out up there. The snow is so slow today. Too many snowboarders up here today. Too much vids today. I can see way too far. <laughs> Hot chocolate's too hot. And fun. Oh, fair enough. I mean, you can't be having a hot chocolate that is too hot, but especially there, when there was just too many snowboarders, oh, forget about it. You know, you've got a beautiful morning or maybe afternoon, but it's been perfectly raked, it looks like, and then you just scan all the down it, but the snowboarders come out and the whole thing's ruined. And finally, don't overestimate one's ability to ski. Sure I can do black diamonds? Yeah, just remember your pizza on french fries. Sure. What did we That's miss? A serious Leave a dummy. In the My goodness. Below. Wow, what a tumble. I mean, you can see that that is a dummy, but man, that is a serious stunt that they managed to pull off there, didn't they? Just out of the. I don't even know where. I guess up the top, but it's fresh powder. At least it looks like it to me. So you're cruising pretty fast. And to be honest, if it was a person, then they clearly just haven't even learned the basics yet. You know, you got to learn pizza while you're falling down a hill like that. Come on, it's easy. But I like always, and once again, just an incredible video by these guys, you know, and they really are teaching me so many things from how to be Canadian to how to be American to how to just hate snowboarding. It really is an incredible trifecta. And even though there might be a few words I need to learn before I just go out and hit the slopes and even just a bit of technique I have to brush up on, aka just to learn in the first place, I feel as though after this video, I would certainly be a lot more comfortable just going out there and hitting 360s. It'd be easy, I'm sure. As long as I've got a pair of these bad boys and just make sure I pick out the right colour scheme for my ridiculously oversized hoodie, then what else could go wrong, honestly? But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the YouTube algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out that awesome video down in the description below. Or hey, maybe even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss on one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.